Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, in this video, we'll take a look at this, a battery powered mini SWR and power meter, which has some interesting and useful features, especially for those that are going to be using it out in the field. The front panel hosts the color LCD, along with three push buttons and three LED indicators. Now, on the rear, we find a power switch, two SO239 connections, and a USB-C port, which is used for charging the internal 1000 mAh battery. And the supported frequency range of this SWR power meter is listed as between 1.8 and 54 MHz, with a maximum power input of 200 watts SSB. Now this meter is actually rated to be used between 0.5 watts and 120 watts, with 200 watts USB momentarily. Now, if you do go above 200 watts, then the inbuilt audible alarm will sound to warn the operator. Now, after powering on, the color LCD will be visible. Now, there are a few different layouts which you can cycle through by pressing the end button labeled as M. The inbuilt alarm can be disabled by pressing the left button. This can also be enabled using the same button. Now the middle button just changes the language from English to Chinese and then back again. However, if you hold the left button in and then release, you can adjust the SWR trip value, which when used, the alarm will sound if the SWR reaches or exceeds this value. Now this is great for radios that do not have any SWR protection or if you need that extra nudge to stop transmitting with a high SWR. Of course, none of us want to damage our radios, so it's a quite useful feature, as well as showing us all of our information like forward power and SWR. If you power on while holding the left button titled down, then you'll enter into the forward fine adjustment screen. Now this is more of an initial calibration setting, which has already been adjusted at factory and should only be adjusted if you can calibrate to another known good source. Now the same goes with the SWR fine adjustment, which is accessed by holding the middle up button down while powering on. Again, no need to adjust this unless you know there is a calibration issue and you can calibrate it against a known good source. It's nice to see that these settings are available just in case there is an issue in the future. Now to demonstrate the adjustable SWR alarm, I have the SWR power meter in line with my NFED half-wave antenna and my FTDX10. Now on 80 meters, there's only a small portion of the band which is resonant and below an SWR of two. While transmitting, the LEDs will illuminate, providing a quick visual aid to the SWR. Now green means good, and as I start to adjust the VFO, you can see the LED change from green over to the alert LED. You'll also notice the SWR value increases until we eventually get to a point where the alarm sounds as we reach the SWR threshold that we set previously. Now, as well as the SWR feature, this meter also shows the RF power. Now for true readings, I guess you should connect the output of the meter to a 50 ohm dummy load. But for this demo, I'll leave the NFED half-wave antenna connected and then just cycle through some different power levels. Now as I go through the power levels, incrementing them slightly, we can see that the value shown on the power meter is relatively close to that output level the FTDX10 was set to. So although I wouldn't use this for calibrating a radio, it's definitely close and usable out in the field. You will also notice some other readings on the LCD, such as efficiency, reflected power, and antenna RF power, which is measured in watts. I guess these values are calculated internally from the reflected power. So one last thing to do is to take a look inside the box and see how well this has been built. Now opening is fairly easy and by removing four screws, two from either end of the top plate, you can separate the plates to reveal the internal rechargeable battery mounted on the top plate and then a nice looking black PCB. Now I know I've said this before in other videos, but I really do like these black PCBs. Overall, it looks well built with the battery charging circuit down the left, the main processor in the middle, and the obvious transformer, which is fed from the two rear SO239 sockets. The reason for opening this and showing the internals is because there was an older version of this meter, and I personally wanted to check that it was a different board. 
The design does look similar, but it's definitely a different board. There's also a date printed on the board, which is only a couple of months ago, so it does appear to be the latest version. Anyhow guys, if you have one of these, let me know how you get on with it, what you've used it for, if you've taken it out in the field. I've been told that the internal battery will last a full day, although I personally haven't tested it. Anyhow, until the next video, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.